Happy Tuesday, everybody. Bobby Five back with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are bringing you another NBA breakdown for DraftKings mostly. We'll talk about FanDuel as well. Uh, but Sheets, it's been a little bit of a frustrating up and down week for me. I, I've, I've sort of had the, like a lot of the right spots and a lot of the wrong ones. And I'm just a little frustrated so far early in the NBA, but I'm ready to get it back. I did make a nice nah, no, it's, 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 it's all good. You know, you don't, you don't remember this, you know, because there have been, I'm pretty sure, two times since we've been doing this where you were kind of felt like you were on the ledge. And, and, and you don't, maybe you don't remember them, but each of those two times, like probably within 48 hours after that, was like a really, really big hit for you. Well, yeah. One, I, you remember when you did like the whole, when you were like like drunk doing the live stream and you had to like, you erase the whole thing and you were like so pissed off and you didn't cast it. I think like two days later, whatever. And there was another time where you were like, again, I think it was, I think it was out calling too soon. You were, oh my God, why can't I win whatever? And then like two days later, you on one line, I've hit like something like for six figures. Well, alcohol, 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 I was getting out of plane. The alcohol came after the lineups being, tr trying to sweat out like at the time, you know, a hundred K that really mattered. And, uh, right. and it happened twice in, in four days. And it was at a time where I just moved. Right. There was a lot of stuff going. Anyway, we can get back into that, but All right. I attack it again. I actually feel good about the game and the style of play. I just feel like we've got to, you know, but you, but you, but you know what? It's important. Everybody knows, you know what I mean? Like this is a, this is a game of variance and, and we're people too. And we're, you know, we're, we, we, we fight through it just like everybody else. And we're not going to win all the time, you know, and, and I'll tell you this, like anybody that you, that you, that, that tells you they win all the time is, 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 at best lying and yeah. you know what I mean like and at worst like like being like you know almost trolling you know what I mean it's so so you know all you do is put yourself in a position to win and then you just basically so like and here's like interesting like when you look at results again I look at results just totally differently probably than a lot of people like I I look at the results literally 10 minutes after the game start right because if I look at my lineups I say okay I have a good amount of low owned guys and a good amount of short guys. These are my lineups. Sometimes you you know the the the, the ball doesn't go in. You know what I mean. Sometimes this the the the, the shot it shanks off to the right. You know it's just the way it goes. And and this is a very high variance game. And and you know so you have to just judge your results based on you know your on on on, on your lineups uh, at, before you know how many fantasy points they score. So as long as again as long as we're doing well process wise, I don't think that that, you know, we're, you know, it's that big a deal. I still think I'm like basically like a C plus with process. It just takes a while for me to get back to it from time management. I was telling Bobby yesterday, I had some really, really good calls, both on the BetQL show and our show and had a couple of good plays. They ended up playing 40% of a guy. I didn't even enter the freaking lineup. You know what I mean? So, so it's sometimes my, sometimes the brain just kind of just, so I get my process has an, has a, has a, has, was like an A for yesterday. My execution was an F. So let's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So why, let's, let's get into today. We're doing NBA now, right? Yep, we're doing NBA. Um, we're going to talk a little bit. I mean, we got, we got to get into it real quick because we've got a couple okay. hours, but we'll, we'll get it going. Um, we'll, we'll go game by game. If you want to share your screen, why don't we do that? It might be the easiest way to go. Yep, so this is, this is the completely dummy lineup, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to build this right from the start. And I have my, I have my spreadsheet like kind of off to the side, which uh, I'm like you. I don't want to show like, my, whole, my whole thing. Um, but uh, I, I, have a, I think I have a pretty good idea what I want to do. Um, well, let's, let's, let's talk about it because let's go game by game and then we'll sort of talk about the overall lineup, you know, build at the end. Okay. All right. So uh, first game, Brooklyn, Milwaukee. What, I see that you've got some interest in uh, some of these high-priced Brooklyn. No, 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 no. This is literally a dummy lineup. Okay. 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 So um, let's, 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 let's click on the game. Why don't you click on the, the Brooklyn, Miami, and let's clear this one yeah, out. Yeah, so, so here's the thing. Um, Brooklyn is has basically you know conceded this game. Um, you know they are what are they eight seed or something like that or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're resting or whatever resting. Uh, Levert sort of hurt. Um, another guy I forget who it was. Joe Harris is sitting, and they're playing Milwaukee. They are completely throwing in the towel for this game. So for me, there there are two things that you could, well three things you could do. Only one probably one of them going to do. You could, you know, fade the blowout risk and play Giannis and Middleton and all that. Number two, you could try to find, you know, the Brooklyn guys who are going to play the minutes and, and, and play them cheap. Um, or you could try to find the Milwaukee guys who are going to play the blowout run and, and, and play them also. Um, but what I, I – mean, the best I think I'm going to do is I'm probably going to try to find – maybe play these Brooklyn guys. So 
the two guys that I like the most are Tyler Johnson and the other one is Garrett Temple. Um, you know, again, n nothing's guaranteed. Um, this game is a complete catastrophe. And, uh, you know, those are really probably the only two guys I'll play from the whole game. I'm not playing Giannis, playing 19 minutes or whatever he's going to play, whatever. And I know you're not supposed to predict blowouts, but I'm, I'm just – there's just too many, like, like with Luca in the freaking slate and, and, and Westbrook in the slate and Harden in the slate, Lillard in the slate. I'm just not doing it. You know what I mean? I just, I, I, I just, I just can't play Giannis in that, in that, in that game. Environment. Yeah. I'm having a hard time with it because I, I actually think that Giannis even in 30 minutes might put up like 65. Um, is that enough? Like <laughs> probably. Uh, I, I'm struggling a little bit with it, especially when you factor in position and scarcity and how strong some of the guards I like are. So it's a little bit you want to pay up out at a forward spot. I, I don't know. It's it's. I don't see how this game stays even reasonably close. Um, oh, before before you go on, I didn't want to come off the wrong way. Temple at best, uh, was not on DraftKings. Temple was going to be on FanDuel actually. Temple, yeah, Temple like or Tyler Johnson on play on FanDuel make a lot more sense to me. I'm I'm probably both these guys actually. I mean. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can do the Tyler Johnson thing at 6,600. I mean, he plays full games. No. Although there's nobody else on the court. Like, he does play full games and not get there at 3.1K. I mean, it's just hard for me to, to do it. Uh, maybe Chioza. Um, I don't know. For me, it's mostly a stay. I would probably play a tiny bit of Curix, and I would probably only do that in the lineups where I'm playing. Well, no, I, I guess he could play 28 minutes no matter what. So I would play Curix anyway. But I'll play a little bit of Giannis because at low ownership, I just think he, you know, could crush in 25 minutes. But I don't think I'm going to prioritize anything on this game. Plus, the later we wait, you know, we keep hearing late things later in the day, so that might be valuable. To skip this. Yeah, list. I'm. I'm probably just gonna, I, you know, let's, I'm, I think someone else might win 200,000 tonight, like getting this game right. It's just, it's just, I don't, just don't think it's going to be me. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, maybe <laughs> it's not going to be me either. All right, let's move on to uh, Dallas and Sacramento. All right, so Dallas and Sacramento, I, I definitely have interest in. Um, my, my favorite, uh, I think, pretty, I wouldn't say by a pretty big margin, but I, I guess I'm safe to say that. I, I, I like Luca here um, as my top spend up, and I, I like it. Um, and uh, for me, it's not particularly close, um, given everything else. I mean, I actually like some of the Houston guys um, – but we'll we'll talk about that later. But but Lucas is going to be my favorite uh, in this uh, in this probably in this whole slate and certainly in this game. I like him a lot. From uh, Sacramento, I like um, I like Fox. I think he's he's just fine. And those are my two favorites. And then you go down. Uh, we, I'll go right back to uh, the, the the cheapies on Sacramento too. That being Bielitsa and uh, and Bogdan. I think those are both very very strong plays. And uh, you know, Fox, Bogdan with Luca on the other side. I think it's a very, um, I think it's a good way to, good way to start. Yeah, I, I, I think the best GVP play we're going to get in any recent time is going to be Chris Stops in this game. I know. I knew, I knew that was coming too. I don't understand it. Like, I, I just, he, we're going to have no one going to draft a guy. He put up 52 and 70 his last two games. His stretch before the the weird like the weird two horrible game stretch was 75, yeah. 66, 62 right before with a 49 in between and a 57. What exactly in an up paced matchup because Sacramento's playing really fast these days? Why are we avoid like I just don't get it. I understand that there's good center. I guess there's good centers. Um, I don't know. I'm all over Chris Stops personally. I don't understand his projections haven't been right in a million years and. I'm probably I'm, – I'm into Luca too, but I probably am going to have to get a little bit less of them because I really like Kristaps. Um, and you're not going to be able to play both of them. You can, but it's – But then you don't get to play anything from that Houston game, you know? Exactly. Like, Whereas I could, play, I could play a combination over there and then maybe get in – yeah, it's a little – it's interesting. Anyway, I, I really – I think that Kristaps right now is my priority. I might get more Luca in as the day goes. He's much safer, it feels like, obviously. But Kristaps has looked as good as anybody else in the bubble and might go out there and put out 70 again. He's going to be not owned. There's your tournament pivot. You could do everything else by the book, and there you, you're probably going to be very, very low owned. Although I'm guessing as the day goes on, people are pretty sharp. I'm going to guess that people start picking up some ownership on him, don't you think? No. No? They never plan. Played him a little bit the other day. Yeah, they're not going to plan. I mean, 
you're gonna win the you're gonna win the whole thing because because people are gonna be like be like me they're gonna say they're gonna love Luca they're not gonna want to play the two of them together they're gonna want to save room for Houston Portland and 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 you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna play Porzingis Luca's gonna score 55 you know and Porzingis will score probably also 55 and you'll have an edge over all those Luca lineups I mean uh, yeah and then you'll get to play your Lillard you know what I mean like and then there'll be a uh, or Westbrook and then you'll 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 win the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, the plan, and, right? <laughs> that's the plan. That is the plan. I mean, I do I think some fringe pieces you can play in this game, too. Like, I'm kind of – like, DFS is 4.2, and usually we wouldn't have considered him on a super value slate, but we don't have the same value on DraftKings today. Um, so, I think, you know, DFS at 30-plus minutes in a pace game, I think he's you can probably squeeze him in there if you want to, or DeLon Wright, but I'm not excited about it. Are people really going to play Trey Burke? Is that a thing? I mean, I don't know. That seems like a high. I, I, I don't even have him in my player pool. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. He's uh, He did put up 47 on the first game, but he made his first seven threes, I think. So. Oh, good for him. Yeah, good for him. We'll pass. Um, on the on the Sacramento side, yeah, De'Aaron Fox is like, the price is just kind of silly, obviously, which is going to make him popular. I think you're going to see a lot of Fox Luca. You might not see a lot of Fox Porzingis. <laughs> no, you sure won't. And I'll tell you what, you certainly won't see is a lot of Fox healed Porzingis because I yeah. actually think that healed one of these days is going to break out of this and just – He's only 5K. He's going to catch fire, yeah. And and I don't know, it's just worth – it's absolutely worth a large GPP play. You should you should absolutely have him in, in, a, in actually a decent amount of lineups. This is a great matchup for these guys. Same thing with Bogdanovich, I feel like. But I actually think the, the, the best guy to go back to is Rashawn Holmes. Um, I don't care that he's let us down. He got in foul trouble in the last game, killed his minutes. I like this matchup a lot better for him. I could see it going Bielich's way. I could see him end up, ending up in the same, around the same minute range. I still think in 26 to 28 minutes, he's going to put up 30 to 40 fantasy points. And I really like him at 5.2. So, you know, there's a lot, a lot you could say about game stacking here. I would just try to recommend you don't do it the really obvious way and just play Fox and uh, – and and Doncic and then unless you're the rest of your lineup is really different yeah um let me just check one thing real quick yeah Fox yeah yeah I I I think Holmes I mean I I I count similar to Bogdan and even the elites and stuff like that yeah I like yeah Holmes is fine it's interesting. It's just he's got upside, and it's a good, the weak front line. They don't even have Joe, uh, Dwight Powell in there, fast pace. Like, it just uh, seems like he could have one of those old Rashawn Holmes, you know, 45 fantasy point halves or something. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's move on. Ready for Phoenix and the Clippers? Yeah, I'm trying to think if I want to play Luca and Kristoff together somehow. All right, we'll, uh, we'll figure that out. All right, so Phoenix uh, Clippers, uh, I actually – like the two big guys at the top of the Phoenix uh, lineup, I like Booker and I like um, and I like Aiton. Um, I think they're both. I, you know, maybe the whole the whole slate's really cheap. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I was looking at Fox at seventy two hundred. You know, whatever. But I mean, well, I guess that, Booker that's that's not part is. Cheap. When I first looked at it, my first thought was, okay, I could easily build a very strong lineup without spending more than nine k, and my nine k would be Porzingis. Or right. I could switch and play one of the Houston guys, you know, or, or Lillard, but or Westbrook and Lillard, let's say, you stay under 10K. Don't play any of the 10K-plus guys. It just feels like there's enough medium value, but there's not a lot of good, like, value, like extreme value. So, so yeah, so, so I like Booker and Aiton. Um, I, I thought on FanDuel, I thought that Michael Bridges was playable and um, the other idiot over there, Cam Johnson maybe. I didn't get to them on DraftKings, but um, – No Cam Johnson idiot. He's a stud, this guy. No, no, I'm just saying the idiot on my spreadsheet. <laughs> um, so Cam Johnson I thought was good on FanDuel. I didn't get to him on DraftKings, but I, I – because I don't, I don't think we need to. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. We'll, um, we'll see about that. You definitely don't need to, but he does – I mean, I just – I will say he does have upside um, even at this price. He, we saw it the other day, but it is a tough matchup, so you don't need to, to do it. Okay. Um, and on um, on the Clipper side, I, I think that um, I mean, especially on, on like on FanDuel, for example. I mean, I, I just really would prioritize Kawhi over Giannis, for example, uh, at this at that same position. Yeah. Um, and he's fine on DraftKings too. I mean, I, again, I don't I don't like to prioritize him in general, but 
I mean, I don't know, at 9,100, um, I, I, I kind of like him. And I like Paul George just fine, too. You know, I, I, I get, you know what? I, maybe it is. Maybe it is just a real soft pricing day. But I, I think I like Kawhi a little. But it's weird because it's actually a really tough pricing day for all yeah, the I guess. Like, like, I mean, you look, you look at FanDuel, you've got Booker. You, I mean, you could play both any of the – either of these forwards in – Phoenix, uh, especially, I, but I would prioritize like one of Cam Johnson or Saric. Saric yeah, I even, I even thought Saric was fine over FanDuel. On FanDuel. On DraftKings, yeah. I'm not going to go there, but yeah. It's, right. I'm not too excited about the, the Clippers side of this personally. I actually thought people were going to be on Kawhi and maybe they will be, but I, I don't know why I want 45 fantasy points out of 9,100 today. Like, because you might not, you might get 70, no? Why? When does he do that? Like, when does he, in a necessary situation where it actually matters, like, actually do that? Has he put I up, I, I'm looking back at, here, I found the 70 game. I found one, the 170 game there. And I don't even know how he did it there. Like, oh, he had a triple-double. Which is <laughs> his only triple-double maybe of his career. I don't remember him having another one. Um, oh, he almost had a couple other ones. But even still, like, yeah, dude, I, I, not, not so much for me. I, I certainly am fine with it. I'm FanDuel 8.6. It's, it's harder to, to – I mean, you look at the context of the slate, you're going to have, you know, Luka, Westbrook, Harden, and, and Lillard, you know what I mean? All of whom are just going to be just out for freaking blood. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to play Kawhi in that type of – you know what I mean? With, when you deal with those four type of ceilings that are there available up there. Yeah, and honestly, from what we've seen, not just in the bubble, but even somewhat when they were healthy playing earlier this year – we haven't seen Kawhi really outscore uh, Paul George all that much uh, when they when they're when they're together. So I would probably just lean with Paul, George, Paul George myself. Um, but I'm not even excited about that. This game, you know, I do want to point out the Clippers are getting back to healthy. Lou Williams is supposed to play today. Might get 18 minutes out, out there. It's going to spread out some of the usage. You're going to have a, 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 just a much better team than they have in Phoenix. So it's kind of hard. You know, you could you could make an argument this game could be a little bit maybe avoid the Clippers side of it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm having trouble with it. Uh, Pat Beverly is going to get more minutes today because they're going to keep upping him, but 3.9, so he's kind of okay. But, like, I don't know. I get, Yeah, I'm like you. I'm more interested in the Phoenix side. I kind of like Booker, but I just it's just an ownership thing and the fact that he's he plays well against good defenders. I know that sounds really weird, but he does. I mean, his usage, is, I think, has been the highest in the bubble or second highest in the bubble. But the price is a little tricky. I don't know. I'm not loving it, but I, I do like Aiton. I, I think Aiton is the best play. They just have trouble with size uh, in L.A. And, you know, look, if nobody's going to play Rubio again and you're going to play one of the guys on the other side, you're going to play Aiton. I don't mind if you want to play Rubio in there at 1% ownership who could put up 45 fantasy points. Yeah, I thought he was, he was, pretty, he was okay on FanDuel also. Not going to go crazy with it, though. Yeah. All right. Ready for okay, Orlando? so Orlando, Orlando, Indiana. Well, I uh, just it, we have to remember to talk about this. So, so Aaron Gordon is basically free on FanDuel. Um, not the same on DraftKings, but I just would be remiss if I didn't point that out. He's like, it's like fifty, what fifty six hundred or something. Yeah. On FanDuel, but we at the same time we have like really good value over there. So don't don't let that think that you have to just plug this guy in, even though it makes sense. I understand it. But he, he's a good play. He was my first Vandal build. But you don't have to. Okay. But um, which is we're talking about the game. The, I, I do like Vooch in the spot. Um, he's one of my top – another one, 7,800. Um, who do you th – you think there's going to be any real um, uh, difference in ownership between someone like Aiton and Vooch or no? I would bet you they're both pretty high. Um, okay. people might be more comfortable with Vooch because he's been around longer. But I don't know, though. I think Aiton's probably a slightly better play. So not that big a deal, right? No, no. The only reason I mention is because I, I find them both just, like, almost equal for me, you know? So, yeah, I agree with that. So in a situation like that, if, if, if one was just that much pyro owned, I would, I would take a shot at that. I feel like maybe you have more security that this game stays close, but I also feel like you have maybe more upside with Aiton. Eh, it's close. Um, I don't really, I didn't really get to anybody. Well, if, uh, I'm a little concerned on back to back with both Brogdon and Warren. Um, but I, I think Brogdon at 50, he's still 5,400. I mean, it's kind of hard to ignore that. No, so, 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 <laughs> so Brogdon would be my favorite on the Indiana group. Uh, more, uh, more Brogdon's so than like seventy-five percent on today. I promise you. Who, who, who Brogdon? 
a hundred percent. He'll be seventy. Oh well, then you know. Whatever. It's the same thing happened with Jay yesterday. It's good, but yeah, it's okay. Okay, so so those are we my top. Uh, you know, uh, just uh, just on on value and whatever it is would be Brogdon. I, and I would have to go way down on my list to get to to TJ Warren. So can and, I and Michael and, and Miles Turner? I think is is is, is okay also on uh, maybe on FanDuel, but um, I wouldn't mind Mike Miles Turner also. Yeah, so I'm just going to say, like, I want to point out something real quick. I'm just going to make the argument against Brogdon, not that there should be a good one. Coming back from COVID, late to camp, uh, played yesterday, adding Oladipo back into the mix tonight uh, against one of the slowest and better defensive teams in the NBA. And having said all that, I think I'm still just going to play him. <laughs> Are you? I, mean, I didn't even realize how that that that, that... – Oladipo is really in the mix. I mean, is, well, let me ask you this. Is Oladipo going to get enough minutes where you have to go back to playing him? You don't have to, but you definitely can. Okay. Um, he hasn't quite, like, I, I wasn't really impressed the other day. Um, but he looked okay. Um, I don't know, man, where I stand with him, to be honest with you. I, I think that if no one's on it, it's worth probably taking a shot. But I think you'll have some people on it. So I, I just think maybe getting like 15 to 20% if you're making a lot of lineups, but I wouldn't prioritize him in, on small lines. It's hard not to play Brogdon because he's going to have the ball in his hands, but at the same time, it is kind of a funny way to flip it. Like you're saying, maybe think about it at Oladipo at much lower ownership could easily be the higher score of the two. It, it, these prices are so tempting that you, with, with the two of them, that you kind of want to almost like play this game more than you probably should. Oh, I, mean, I was going to ask, why, why do you have to play anybody against freaking Orlando? But also, I mean, can I make a bet right away that this – so Orlando's had the totals go over in all the games. I bet this is the day that Orlando hits the under on their totals. Okay. <laughs> because this is – Yeah, with, 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 with Aaron Gordon as chalk on FanDuel and, 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 and Brogdon as, as, as chalk on, uh, on draft games, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ownership for a game that – these are these have traditionally been slow teams, although Orlando is playing a lot faster, I, I will say that. Um, I just think without Isaac, by the way, with Orlando, we should also give – that's part of the reason why I have the boost up to Vooch and Gordon also. But also I think um, Evan Fournier, we didn't mention, he's 5,100. And at that kind of a price, he does become a good GPP play because he can put up 30-plus fantasy points pretty easily. Now, they had the blowout win against Brooklyn, and then they had that – wasn't the blowout also in Sacramento? Um, he, could, he definitely can get hot. He can, he can, yeah, and he's going to be actually owned a little bit because he's going to play enough minutes at 5,100. Um, so just kind of an interesting guy. But, again, this game just feels a little bit icky. Um, and, and also, I'm going to make sure I have at least 10% TJ Warren lineups. I said it again yesterday. This is, I know, understand they get Oladipo back today, but when, every, when there's these guys out, this is no fluke that he's putting up these monster games. What's funny is he put up the same number of fantasy points basically yesterday that he did the other day, um, even though he didn't score yeah. 53 real-life points. He, they're going to run a lot of the offense through him. He took 29 and 26 shots the last two games. They'll probably be closer to 20 today. But at 8K, um, certainly kind of interesting and definitely, like, is going to probably get it to be owned on FanDuel, I would guess, at 6.4. Um, probably one of the higher-owned guys at small forward over there. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's my uh, TJ Warren. You got to take a shot on him take. And, and I'm okay with, with, with uh, Miles Turner, but I'm definitely not going to – I'm actually probably not going to get around to it, but it's, I'm not into it. Is uh, Miles Turner, is this one of those situations where it's, it's, a, it's, gonna, it's tough to play Booch because Booch can be drawn out to the outside to guard Turner from the three point yeah, line? Yeah, I'm thinking about it both ways. Like it actually could benefit Turner and it could punish, like, yeah. But also there's, um, so the, the, Turner's not someone who I would, who's going to get you into foul trouble. That's what worries me about Turner is like he'll get into foul trouble and then all of a sudden, you get a five fantasy point half from him, even when he puts up 25 in the second half, you feel like, you feel like garbage. Um, right. So I don't know. I, I'm ready to move on to the next one. I, I, I don't love that game. I'll, I'll get to the ownerships at the end and how I would pair some players. Um, I think that's kind of important to tell the people. So we'll, we'll do that. Some of that at the end. Um, okay. So in the uh, Boston, Miami, nothing really uh, um, off the board. Uh, I, I think Butler is fine. And even him, yeah, they're 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 pricing everybody so you can play whoever you want. Um, no, no, they're not. So here, you're missing what they're doing. They're not pricing you so you can play whoever you want because you really can't. They're only pricing okay. you so you can play the mid-tier players that you want, which is okay, actually fair a really enough. Interesting situation. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, you can't play Harden and Doncic and West, and you know so easily or Giannis. Right, you want. right. You play but all these other guys. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. So. Uh, Butler looks fine at 7,200, uh, just in and of himself. 
Uh, Tatum looks perfectly fine at 8,300 in and of itself. Um, I don't, and as usual, and this was the case at the, towards the end of the season before we had the break, is remember every single slate on FanDuel, there was Giannis as like a lock at small forward because there's nobody else, or you had Hayward and Jalen Brown both, you know what I mean, popping as big values. You could never get either of them at like less than 50% ownership on, uh, on FanDuel because they were always just so cheap, and I think it's just kind of the same thing, you know. Um, so both those guys are fine on FanDuel. I don't know if I'll get to them on uh, on DraftKings, but uh, so for me, it's just Tatum and um, and the other guy and, and and Butler. Yeah, so I don't think anyone's really playing anything from this game. So I, I think Daniel Tice is, is actually the, my favorite play, just from you know in a vacuum from Boston. He's getting the minutes. He's going to have to play against their size. I, I, it's not a good matchup, obviously, but like somebody's going to have to get these boards. Um, so he's kind of okay, okay, moderately interesting. If nobody's going to play Jason Tatum, I think that, which I think they're not going to, I think we kind of have to consider taking a shot on him. Like, he's got such massive upside, and he's 8,300, and you, you get guys like Tatum and Luca, I'm sorry, and, and Kristaps into your mix, and maybe take away some of the Lucas, and these guys don't need to outscore him. They can, you know, they can put up 55 fantasy points, which would be better than Luca 60 or 65. You know what I mean? And it's very totally possible that that's that that's in the that's in the realm of possibility. So I would uh, and we have to. These are short slates. They're pretty short, and it's pretty easy to tell where everyone's going. So playing Tatum when no one's going to, I just think it's kind of interesting. And I love the way that Jalen Brown and Gordon Hayward have looked. Um, but you're going to get some more minutes from Kemba tonight. It's going to take away a little bit of that. I'm not going to play them against Miami's tough defense. But I do think Tatum is. I'm definitely interested in Tatum here tonight. I I, I think that he's like a could could be a slate breaker, even though none of the numbers are probably going to lend itself to that. We've just seen how hot he is. He's really been a 50 plus fantasy point scorer for the last month and a half of, of play. We just, um, we just haven't been seeing it. So we got to remember that about his pricing. Same thing with Kristaps. Him and Kristaps were like two of the five highest scoring fantasy points per game players for uh, the last month and a half. Anyway, so I just wanted to get in that Tatum. Uh, obviously Jimmy Butler is a ridiculous price. Um, so if you want to play Tatum, I don't mind playing a little Tatum, Jimmy Butler action. I don't think, the more I'm talking myself into this Tatum thing, I'm actually – I'm just going to keep increasing my ownerships and see if I end up with as much of them as I think I might because just can't see people going there, man. Um, so, I, I mean, on, and then on the other side, you know, you, you obviously Butler, but, like, what about – like, what about Bam? You know, 7,700 is pretty cheap. Now, while I you – know, Cantor, obviously, is going to get some minutes, so you've got him, and then you've got Tyson there, and he's going to initiate a lot of the offense – you don't necessarily want to play Bam with Butler too much, especially against a good defensive team. But one of those two guys definitely makes a lot of sense. And I think that it would be mostly Butler, but I will throw some Bam in. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I was, I was asking before, you know, what's the ownership difference going to be between Aiton and Booch because they're the same price whenever. I mean, if they're both going to be popular, then Bam at the exact same price is going to be just zero, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. One, one, one off the board guy in this game that always has played well against or usually has played well against his former team and has been really good in the first two games of the bubble and yet somehow is going to be just completely avoided when we need value is Kelly Olenek. Kelly Olenek has put up 31 and 35 in the last two games. He's 3,800. He's played well against Boston in the past. He's clearly a part of this rotation that they've got going. There's no added players. So the projection for his minutes, while certainly during the season might have made sense at 20, He's been he's played 24 and 31 minutes in the first two games they've played so far this, this year. So why would we assume that it would be any different? And that wasn't a close game. He played down the stretch. Why would we assume it would be different this time around? I think it's kind of interesting to, to take a shot on. So after all those games are over, <laughs> they're all literally all going to be over. And there's going to be someone out there that's in first place that's going to be like flexing. Really, they're, they're, they're out there. They're going to say, oh, my God, I got 350 points and, you know, and I'm done with all this, you know, whatever it is. I don't even have to watch the Houston. Yeah, you, know, you, you do. That's the problem. Um, what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the line in this game, by the way? It's 240, 240 two, one, two and a half, 242 and a half. Good grief. Um, okay, so my favorite play in that, that, that game is actually – well, I'm actually between all three. Um, I think I, I prefer Westbrook, and then after that, uh, Harden and uh, Lillard. 
think all three of them are really, really good plays. Um, uh, I, those of you who haven't been watching these videos for a while, I always call um, uh, Bobby the C.J. McCollum whisperer. He always knows when C.J. McCollum was going to have a good game. One thing I'm not doing, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, maybe, maybe this is dumb, but because I played him at 5K both times, I'm, I'm not playing – I don't think I'm playing Nurkic at 8,500. Um, it's just, um, I don't know, it just seems like going to be a shooting fest on the outside and the penetration fest. It's going to be like a – it's going to be lower than C.J. McCollum and, 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 and Harden and Westbrook. And, uh, Covington, certainly fine. Pick up all the peripherals and, and, and you know, so he's – I like him too. I'm not going to play anything else though. I'm not going to try to speculate on, on the secondary pieces or anything like that. Um, no, like Gary Trent shots or Carmelo shots or anything like that. Um, I'm just uh, going to play the big guys. And it's a question of ownership, I suppose, but there, I, I have to get some of these guys in my lineups, right? I mean, yes. Um, so you're on Portland, you're not going to have any ownership. So let's get into that in a minute. Um, but on the Houston side, the only person who I'm really projecting, this is one of those spots, you know what I mean? Like yesterday, outside of John Morant, they're really – and Brandon Clark, there wasn't, like, all the ownership in that game like everybody said. You know what I mean? You had Drew right. Holiday at whatever, at 14, and all the 10%, all that stuff. So we're going to see something similar a little bit today where people are going to play one of Harden or Westbrook somewhat, although Westbrook's going to definitely get the edge because of the price difference. I just yeah. want to point out that James Harden, like, did not play well the other night against Milwaukee and put up 55. Uh, only shot the ball 14 times, which I don't know how many times that's going to happen with James Harden. <laughs> so I would be like he scored 85 on uh, fantasy points and 50 uh, whatever real points the other day against Dallas on 20 actual shots that's crazy man like that's these are absurd numbers and his free throw rate is through the roof he's still getting the line 13 times a game I, I really like him as a, as a play I, I think that if you on FanDuel trying to play all three of he Westbrook and, and, and Lillard is an option I mean, the one thing I wish I would have done more is just hammer, hammer, hammer the games that Houston and Dallas played in. Obviously, we have Dallas in a different game this year, this today. and Oh, and Portland, too. Um, I think you need to tip to play some of these, these other pieces. So, for Houston, I'm going to prioritize Westbrook number one, Harden number two. I don't know how it's going to work in terms of getting them in because I do prefer Luka individually over Harden, and I think it's more of a Westbrook game. But I like the ownership uh, difference, and I think it – if I play, a, I could play a Harden Porzingis lineup, for example, um, get way off the board. Uh, I like, I want to have more Daniel House than the field. I know his price has gone up a little bit, but I'm just going to keep playing the guys who are playing minutes in these, in these crazy environments who can get hot. So everybody, to me, you should try and have double the ownership of uh, who's a fringe piece because none, none of them are going to be high owned. Uh, Daniel House, he's not my absolute favorite. He's a little more shooting reliant than I like, but he's going to play the minutes and he's going to be shooting. Um, Robert Covington is, is not a fringe piece, really. He's 7.1, which makes people probably stay away from him. He's completely fine at this price. Um, right. the, he's, he's probably the higher priority of those two. The guy on, on FanDuel who I'm sort of flirting with kind of making a weird stance on is, is maybe playing P.J. Tucker at center. <laughs> um, he's 4K. He's 4,400 on DraftKings. He's playing 40 minutes a game. I understand how it is with P.J. Tucker, but it, I, I'm just going to remind everybody. He's been putting up 20, which is nothing. But all it takes is a few extra rebounds, and he's up in the mid-30s, and he's a killer play. So I think he's kind of interesting, too. Not going to go crazy with him on DraftKings, but like maybe like 5 to 10%. He's going to be a completely unowned. The one other guy who's going to be low-owned but might actually get, pick up some steam between some sharp people because he's, he's sort of getting the run. What's going to happen with this, with this team in Houston is these guys are going to play the minutes they can handle, but then there's going to be foul trouble because of the way that they play, just inherently. So Jeff Green becomes an interesting play off the bench, and he's been playing minutes. Um, he's played 22 and 20 minutes in the last two games. He put up 20 and 17 fantasy points. He's 3,500. Those minutes could be even increased against a, a much larger Portland team that they might need to go a little bit bigger against even um, at times if Covington, Tucker, House, who are all foul prone, get into foul trouble. You could see Jeff Green in there, this big man, pretty early. So think about that just as, a, as an off-the-board play. Jeff, Jeff Green is kind of a sharp one to me. Yeah. Um, Portland side, I think it's really easy. I think that you can decide to, to, to avoid it. I'm going to personally take my shots to everybody. I'll be over the field. It doesn't take much to be over the field on Nurkic. I think Nurkic is going to – I mean, he's, gonna, he's the type of player that should dismantle this front line. They don't have anybody. So 
I, I do think Nurkic is fully in play on both sides, but I probably am mostly going to lean with Lillard. The one guy who's going to have ownership is probably Zach Collins. I think Lillard will get maybe like 15% ownership at most, but like, I, I think it's going to be mostly on Collins. Um, and I'm fine with Collins, but I, I don't think I need to be high on that one. He's not my favorite play in the world. And uh, I really like Lillard. I, I'm just, I, I want to, I want to play this game. I want to play Lillard. You know what I mean? And I, and I'll play McCollum on FanDuel where he's 7,300 on DraftKings. I'll probably, probably not, but I still think he's definitely in play. Like it's, we shouldn't just like cross it out. He's, he, he can easily get hot. Like he's been much more active. This is a Houston team that we know how fast they play, how many shots are going to go up. You're basically getting like a 10% boost of your normal gains by playing them. He's put up, he's averaging 55 so far. I'm sorry, 45 so far in the bubble. So he's, he's fair for his price, but he's, he's not my favorite play. And I even think Carmelo is going to get up enough shots to make this a reasonable play, but I, just not, not my favorite kind of play. So I'm not going to go there too heavy. I just want to be overweight on these guys, make sure, which basically means I'll probably just have them in like one lineup but I want to have a, at least a player from each side in, in almost all my lineups today. I mean, it, it's real. I, I, every time I say this, it, it uh, feels, feels strange to say it. And uh, whenever I say it, it ends up something else happens, but it, it does really just feel like a two game slate tonight. Right. I mean, it feels like the Dallas Sacramento game and the, and the Portland Houston game. Um, it does, but the ownership is not acting that way. Well, who's getting ownership? And aside from those games, I mean. let's take a quick look. Let's talk about that real quick. Um, so as of currently, I mean, look, this is still very early in the day and the ownership can change, but Brogdon's projected at 55% ownership. Um, Vooch, here are the highest projected owned players. Brogdon, Vooch, and DeAndre, none of them are in that game. I actually don't think that's going to be right. I think well, but, but the so idea, happy. though, is the idea, though, is because like eight, if, if you, you, you get those guys, they're not in the same positions as the guys you want to play from that game, right? Yeah, but I mean, Jimmy Butler is projected to be thirty percent on Russell Westbrook. There's no way Jimmy Butler's going to be thirty percent. Oh, I guess he's he's forward eligible. That's right. I guess so. and he's seventy two hundred. Right. Yeah. yeah. People that's just true. dump that's stuff like that. Kind of ridiculous, right? Like right. never doesn't put up forty. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't have very many under forty games. He has a few, but not many. Um, kind of tilting at me yesterday on Fanduel. By the way, he's the reason I didn't. Well, everybody's the reason I didn't cash, but he was the reason because like. He had like 24 fantasy points in the first quarter and just didn't do anything the rest of the game. Um, yeah, I mean, Zach Collins is going to be really highly owned. He's in that game, I guess. Yeah, I guess you're right. It is going to be a lot of those guys. But the main three guys who are going to be owned, the, the high three highest ownerships right now, um, are not in that game. And you're going to have a lot of these other fringy guys who are going to be like 20% owned, like Fournier or Kurix or uh, Paul George is going to get 15 or 20% ownership, you know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's going to be a little bit spread out after the top. So, so this is – you're going to probably have to delete this, but this is – I mean, you talk about who is Tuttle's terrible takes. Like, this is – this is, like, a really awful thing to say. But um, I'm just going to anyway just because I'm still stung from having 80% uh, Boban and, and, and not, not cashing on March 11th because that last game was canceled. Um, there's just enough time between the 6.30 game and the 9 p.m. game where if I have Dallas and Sacramento totally stacked, God forbid somebody announces something stupid between 6.30 and 9 o'clock and they cancel that last game, I'll finally get my freaking revenge. Oh, my God. That would be crazy. All right, man. I'm just going to real quick go through my highest owned players. Uh, Lillard and Westbrook are up there for me. I have to try and take my shots. I've actually got Porzingis in there as one of my highest owned players. I mean, I look, I want to take some shots. I'm not going to be playing a huge, uh, massive amount of lineups today. Probably just play like 15 lineups or so. Um, and one big one, so I, I, I don't to worry too much, but really like Chris Dobbs. Um, Brogdon will probably be a little bit under the field, even though I love him. Like, it's just going to be such crazy ownership, and there's just other ways to go. Um, I'll be ahead of the field on Fox, probably. I'll probably be with the field or just below on Luca. Um, but I guess that's good. I mean, so basically, I'm not to play one of him or Przingis in most every lineup, pretty much. That means, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much my only other big strong one was uh. Jason Tatum, and then the currently low projected Giannis, who we might just have to try and take a shot on. Nah, uh, yeah, feel free. Um, <laughs> okay. When, so the other thing, what I would say is that, uh, that we didn't go over too much. Pay, pay, pay some attention to the, uh, the differences with FanDuel, especially, um, you know what, especially the, those, those nets, those, that nets value. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you make sure you confirm that Temple and or Tyler Johnson are starting, which I can't imagine why they wouldn't, um, they're really, really cheap over there. 
Um, yeah. Uh, so keep in mind that. And, and Aaron Gordon, again, is much, much cheaper over there than he is over here. There's, there's a bunch of those that you can um, – and, again, it's a fan duel when you have all these guys that you might want to play. This could be one of those things where you might try to get three or three of those big studs in there, um, or maybe even four, um, and take shots those 3,500s um, to make that work. But DraftKings, again, they're really, they're really tempting you. And it's, it's so funny. We, you think about this, like, after the slate's over, like, if, remember, if Butler scores, like, 60 fantasy points or 65 and is in the winning lineup and we whine, it's, oh, my God, I can't believe it's 7,200. Why don't we play? There's a lot of guys like that. So it's not like, it's not like if you didn't play, you know what I mean? Like, you have to get that 100% right, right. To, to then be able to whine. You know I mean? right. Like, so – so just in terms of the way builds go today, I think that I, I, one approach I'll take in a couple tournaments, but mostly I'm going to be going with paying for one of these guys or two. But you could just play nobody over 9K. And oh, oh, man. I know. But how, how, do, how are you going to fade, like, all those possibilities for 100 fantasy points of those guys? Because the reality – well, nobody's going to get 100, I don't think. But you can fade 70s because you can get other guys to put up 60s. That's true. That's true. So, and we've seen it. We've seen it so far. You know, T.J. Warren is our best example. Mr. I just wish. I just. I just wish that. I mean, that's what makes it hard, man. I just wish that those all those seventy two hundred guys were in just kind of like a better game environment. But that's. I guess that's why they're seventy two. You know what? You know. You know who the guy is? Probably the guy that could legitimately get like a billion points at, at, at those prices. Maybe Darren Fox or somebody like that. Yeah. Like him in that game environment, that could be a two hundred fifty point total, like really, really easily. And he could right. get seventy fantasy points out of that. that from, from 75, maybe not 70, but he could probably get, he can get 60 out of that for sure. Yeah. 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 I think so too. All right, man. Well, this is good. My hot take of the day is going to be uh, KP is on, on the winning lineup in the uh, $15 mega monster, whatever nonsense thing. Um, how about you sheets? Any big take for the yeah, day? Yeah. So I, I have uh, I, I'm, I'm stealing a take of yours. Cause it just, it just hit me. Um, the guy who's going to be on the winning optimal lineup or whatever is going to be buddy. Hill. Oh, I love it. Okay. That's awesome. Um, boy, if we both put, combine our efforts, there's absolutely no way we could uh, lose if we had if we got the rest of, if we had the rest of the pieces as chalk. I think we could, we're probably printing money here. Those guys hit. We play Buddy Healed and then and then Kristoff. Then we can go ahead and play all the Malcolm Brogdon we want. <laughs> absolutely. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. For Sheets, I'm Bobby Fye saying thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you at the top of the leaderboards.